This video shows how to analyze a truss using uh, the TrustMaster program. First of all, we, the screen is laid out in two main sections. The upper section is for drawing the truss and viewing the results. The lower section is the so-called control board, and it's for inputting data, for viewing data, viewing results, um, and, and we, we see that as we go through. So. We need, first of all, to define the truss, and the first thing is to define the nodes. We can show a grid which helps us define the nodes um, by clicking there. And the grid is shown in units or meters. If we zoom out a bit, and maybe out again, or alternatively just press F3, and then we can pan. There are different settings. You can pan, you can draw nodes, draw members select members or nodes, or delete uh, members or nodes, or zoom. So that's all got by right-clicking on, on the mouse. So I'm going to pan and bring the, the axes over like that. So that's the truss I want to uh, define is going to be 10 meters, 10 meters span, uh, 1.7 meters high. It's a, a Warren truss which has a series of equilateral triangles. The units here, incidentally, are in meters. Uh, as you can see down in the, the control board, it specifies units and meters, forces, and kilonewtons. And we'll see some more about member data are defined in square millimeters per area. Right click and select draw nodes. And it's, it snaps if, we're, if you're close to a grid point, the cursor changes to a cross. And when it's that cross, if you click a normal click, it will define a node at that point. So I'm going to define a node at zero, zero every two meters, one, two, now I also now want to define a line of nodes at the midpoints here, which are uh, here, 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 between each of the lower nodes. Now these, because it's an equilateral triangle, this is two meters, the diagonals will be two meters, so the vertical height is actually root three, which is 1.732 meters. So that's a, a little bit inconvenient. It doesn't snap to the grid, if you like. So uh, a more convenient way of doing it is down here, So you, where you can generate a line of nodes. If there's a pattern of nodes at, at constant fixed intervals between each node, you can generate a line. Now, I know there are going to be five nodes in the upper. There are six nodes in the lower and five nodes in the upper line. The first node is going to be at one meter out, one x coordinate of one. The y coordinate is 1.732, which is root 3. The last of the five nodes is going to be 9 meters uh, out and up 1.732. So if we look at the screen and click generate and watch the screen, we see that we get uh, a line of five nodes. <coughs> we can switch off the grid, switch on or off the grid like that. So switch it off when we're defining members uh, to see things a bit more clearly. To define members, we right click again and draw members. And the click on node one, click on or near node two, and that will define a member and give it a member number. It may be useful to just display member data down here. We can see that it has defined member one between node one and node two. You can type these values, so no number two is going to be between node two, center two there, and hit enter. Here you type three and hit enter. And to refresh, right click to get rid of that uh, elastic line. Uh, to refresh, we can do F5, press F5, which is a standard refresh key. And we see number two has been drawn in there. Okay, so the, the alternative, you can do it with a mouse, or you can do it by typing in the values here. I'll continue with the mouse here by drawing members. And three, four. This is def definitely more convenient, I think, than, than typing them in. There isn't uh, any facility to automatically generate members, but it's not, not too much of a, a limitation. When you're finished on that, you don't want the next one to be from starting at node one. So if we right click, turns off that, and now again, just click on seven to activate it again, and we continue on with this. So the left click, the normal click, selects the node. And we right click to stop that. 
So we now have a list of members, and we've defined the thing, the structure. I'll pan there and just bring it up a little bit so you can see it more clearly. And you need to define some supports. Now the, the way to define supports is you go back into the joints data in the control board. And here we see there's a column here called support. Now there are three possible values you can pick. You can put in a one, a two, or a three. N zero or nothing means nothing, a free joint. It's a kind of a binary system. One means that it's restrained in the y direction. Two means it's restrained in the x direction, so they're both the roller supports. And three means it's restra restrained in both the x and y direction. So I want one to be a, a pin support restrained in both x and y, so I type three and hit enter. And we want node six to be a roller support, so that is a, a one, which means it's restrained in the vertical direction but free to move in the horizontal direction. If they don't show immediately, you need to click on Show Supports here like that and press F5 to, to refresh, and we see it there. The next thing is to define loads, uh, and loads go on the individual nodes. And you can do that again by typing in here in, in the, the joints data, uh, force X, force Y. So for instance, I want a line of loads on 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So for instance, if you take node 7 and type in here 10 kilonewtons, so minus 10 in the vertical downward y direction, and hit enter. Again, it doesn't appear unless we say show loads and refresh the drawing with an F5, and it shows there. Now, this is another convenient way where you can generate multiple loads if they're a constant value. So on 8, 9, 10, and 11, I'm going to generate a, an x force, sorry, a y force of minus 10 on nodes 8 to 11. Click OK and do that, and they appear there. So that's another convenient way of generating a, a line of similar loads on a series of nodes. You can change the scale of the forces here by the up arrow, it actually reduces the size of the. the the display of the, of the scale, of, or increases the scale, reduces the size of the forces on the diagram. Now everything is, the geometry of the structure is now defined, uh, and it's almost ready for analysis. Now, if we actually try to analyze it now, it, we haven't, we're missing one thing, we haven't defined the member types, the member properties. If we go into member data here, we see that there is no default uh, member property. Uh, we need an E value and an A value, cross-sectional area, area A and an E value. This refers to pre-stress, but I'm not going to talk about that. Okay, so for example, if we try to analyze it without doing that, we'll see what the error message comes up. This little computer icon up here is the, the run analysis, uh, and also tools F1 will do the same thing. It gives an, an error message, structure is unstable. Um, and that is because the members have not been defined. It's a common error to make that you might tend to forget to do this, but it's quite easy, very quick to actually assign. Certainly if all the members are the same, you can uh, assign the properties in, in one go. So there's 19 members in total in this structure. And we can go over here to member data. We can, if they are all the same, E value, same um, steel, skill newtons per square millimeter, and if they all have the same cross-sectional area, we can just type in 1 to 19 like that and click OK. And we, it, it fills that in. Alternatively, you can go in, in into any of these individually and type um, over type values or, or whatever. A point about the grid, you can say you can type in loads here, but the, the, you need to be slightly careful. That, for instance, if I type in minus 10, minus 25 there, say, and you might be inclined from, say, using Excel or whatever to click away on another cell because you want to now do something else. But if you do click on another cell, that minus 25 gets entered in the cell that you just clicked on, not just where you typed it. So uh, you need to be um, just careful of that. So you can replace that with a zero and, and hit enter. So the best thing to do when you're typing in values is, is type in the value and hit enter. Like so. Uh, type zero and and we can refresh it now to see, and so it looks, all looks fine. And we can now run the analysis and get that. 
it shows everything uh, by default, but we can have all these options to switch on and, and off uh, different displays. Again, we can scale the forces down a bit to make them or, or up. We can scale the, defle the, the deflected shape up or down like that. We can animate the deflection. Now, just move, just move the thing up to so you can see that. If you click on animate, it does this kind of a, a demonstration of how the, uh, much exaggerated, presumably in real uh, for a real truss, or hopefully it wouldn't deflect that much. But it, it's a nice way to see how the how the truss deflects under load. And so you can switch off various displays. The reactions switch off the supports and uh, we we'll switch off the deflected shape and uh, leave the loads perhaps switch off the node numbers now the member forces and the member numbers are, are kind of conflicting there on the diagram so let's turn off the member numbers and now we see the member forces that have been calculated the convention here that's used these lower members are all in tension so the arrows the arrows show the effect of the member force on the node. So this, if this is in tension, it's pulling the node to, from towards the right. Similarly, these are in compression up here, and so a, com a member in compression is tending to push against the node, and that's the, the, the convention for the arrows. So the lower are all in tension. These around here are all in compression. And then alternating diagonals are in compression, tension, compression, tension, compression. It's a symmetrical structure, so everything should be symmetrical. The member forces are shown in kilonewtons on the diagram. But if it's difficult to read on a more complex truss, you can go into member results here, and it shows you the force in kilonewtons in each member. Whether it's in tension or compression, uh, the stress in the force divided by the cross-sectional area and the change in length if it's compression it shortens if it's tension it's getting longer we can minimize the control board and zoom extends to get the, big, the biggest possible or right, we can zoom uh, we can redisplay the control board if you want we can save the picture if we go to drawing and save the picture it prompts you for a uh, bitmap file. But, uh, you can't see that, okay. So it saves it as a bitmap file, which you can then insert into a Word document or whatever, uh, or use it like that. That just saves the picture if you want to display it or document your results. You can save the definition of the structure if you want to file save as, and that. Uh, saves them as uh, the TRM files, Trust Master files. And you can open, next time you run the program, you can recall a, an earlier structure that you used. Finally, there is a, an option to look at the stiffness equations and how they're built up. This is maybe for, for educational purposes. Um, you can show the force vector. You can add member one to the stiffness matrix. All the degrees of freedom down here. It's on a big structure like this, it's it's a fairly big, big, relatively big matrix. You can see that um, you can show the whole entire global stiffness matrix and in supports for restricting the degrees of freedom, and you can solve. So, perhaps on a simpler truss, it will be easier perhaps to, to, to verify these figures or to understand these figures. You can go back to the truss display just by using window and truss display, and we get the full output on the, on the screen like that. That is, um, covers I think most of the features of this software. So it's very quick to set up trusses. Um, you don't have to release, um, introduce moment releases at the end of each member, like in some other software, um, because it assumes it is a pin jointed truss. There's no bending moments, no shear force in any of the members. So um, and I think that concludes this demonstration of Trustmaster. Thank you.